This is a very common PC compatible floppy disk drive. It won't work in a Commodore Amiga. Trust me, I've tried. Even though the connector looks the same and indeed fits, some of the pins deliver different signals. But all that is about to change. A well-placed thumbnail can remove this top panel really easily. Of course the other side decides that it doesn't want to come off. With the top panel removed we can have a really good look inside the drive. And this drive looks like it's probably never been used. Another advantage of PC drives over their Amiga counterparts which were pretty much thrashed to death. Turning over the drive we can see the part we need to work on is obscured by the plate held by these two screws. So let's take those out. and remove the lower part of the case. Now we can see the board that we need to work on and in principle it's fairly easy. All we need to do is connect pin 2 of the connector to pin 5 of the drive controller chip. Next we need to connect pin 34 to the ready signal on the board and sever any existing connections along the way. Sometimes there is a blob of solder on CN1 but that's missing on this drive. We'll also need to move the solder jumper from DS1 to DS0. DS1 is what's expected by most PC drives and DS0 is what most Amigas expect. Let's fire up the soldering iron. Over 350 degrees Celsius might be a bit hot, so let's knock that down around 20 degrees. We'll be working fast. Let's get this solder jumper moved. I think that's taken all the solder off, but let's be careful and use some solder wick. Always moving the solder wick when heat is applied so it doesn't stick to the board and rip off any pads. Before we put some fresh solder on the DS0 jumper, let's put some flux on the board. This will clean the pads and make for easier soldering. And I'm all for easier soldering. Perfect. Let's pick up these small pieces of solder that have strayed when we were desoldering. And some fresh solder onto DS0. Using the flux really helps here. Next we need to count down to contact 5, leg 5 on the chip. And we can be quite brutal here because we don't need the pad underneath. And it does look like that pad has lifted, but we don't need it. This is quite handy because it means I don't need to insulate that pad. Now I know what you're thinking, look at his massive tool. But actually it just looks bigger on screen. It's a really small tool. You can tell everybody that Mark Fixes Stuff has a really small tool. We just need to straighten this pin up. We can remove the remnants of the pad quite easily from the board now but there's still some on the underside of the pin and once we straighten this pin we'll be able to clean up with the desolder pump and the soldering iron. A 
and that's got absolutely everything there clean as a whistle next the track from pin 19 of the chip down to pin 2 of the drive connector needs to be severed just checking there's no longer any continuity between the two points and whilst we're there just checking I haven't accidentally severed any other tracks but I'm happy with that it's time to solder a shunt from pin 2 of the drive connector to pin 5 of the chip now this might look like a massive massive piece of wire but it's really just a piece of DuPont cable I often find it's easier to take the old solder off, add some flux, put some new solder on the pin and then add the wire into the fresh solder. And that's good enough for jazz. Next is the tricky part because we're going to have to solder onto the leg of the pin. So we'll cut the cable to size and then strip the outer sheath. Making sure it's the appropriate length for soldering onto the pin. Time for some more of that magic flux. And a blob of solder and heat both the cable and the pin at the same time. With the first shunt wire in position it's time to add the second. Thankfully this one is a lot easier and we just need to tack this wire onto the ready point on the board and then take it down to pin 34 on the drive connector. I think I'd better add some fresh solder to this joint. Now that's a wire that isn't going anywhere. Now simply to tag it onto pin 34 of the drive connector and it's time for us to sit back and admire our handiwork. But maybe we should test it. So popping the base back on. Putting the screws back in. At this point I just want to mention that I've already re-greased the drive. I've cleaned off the old hardened grease and put on some new fresh grease. Now with that in mind, let's move to the testing phase. This drive looks mean and clean and ready for the Amiga machine. And there's that classic rear view. You sexy beast. We're back once again at the Stunt Amiga A500. It's in a few pieces as you can see, but we can pop it back together fairly quickly. Power for the drive. Data for the drive. Keyboard. Very important. and the drive itself. You have to lift these up to put them on. When replacing the drive cable, make sure that you put pin one to pin one, usually indicated by the blue stripe. I've got my Amiga cable from Cool Novelties here. It's a proper RGB cable. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice I'm not going to plug the audio in. The audio is fine on this Amiga, but it's about 3 o'clock in the morning in Mark Fix's Stuffland, 
and my wife will kill me if I wake the children. The mouse is plugged in. Here comes the power. With everything connected, let's turn this beast on and see what happens. Well, nothing, but that's because we haven't put a disc in the drive. So we're going to try this ST and Amiga dual format floppy from the 90s, which are quite difficult to read because they're an extended format. That is really encouraging. Let's press number one and see if we can load through to the full game. Lots of drive activity. And we are in like Flynn. One for one. Chalk one up to Mark Fix's stuff. Let's also try this Jet Set Willy 2 official diskette. And by official diskette, I mean pirated by some schoolboy in the 90s. Again, that loads with no problem, which is really surprising because it doesn't actually load on my proper Amiga drive. Well, it's getting on for five in the morning. I'd like to test some more discs, but unfortunately the birds are chirping and I need to sleep. So I think the best thing to do is play some Ghouls and Ghosts until my wife gets up. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please smash like and hit subscribe to get your fix. Maybe watch some of these videos. See you all soon. Bye.